Check your collection, what's your selection? Is it pretty pop or hip hop perfected? Sleeves of the minor personality presented. In your rich intelligence, your case reflects it. High be home, rap by below. I blow through the wind like Carol Bobby Yo. Ease drop on the selection to see these pop motivated by what he or she got. Drop the cars, consumer phones keep carbon copying comments, the shades of corny compositions. Can you call the kid who kicks a kind of owner receiving a Q93 complex? All sex boy, ticky, pity, gentlemen, and ticky, jam, jam, the airway, preventing innovative cast from a chance to make it. True time I'm mistaken, spend the money to make it, supporting quality creations. Simple minds get drawn to some business. But not me. I want to mix the genuine creativity. If you can't appreciate that, then you could be feeling me. Cause shoot, we put a lot of time into being a bitch alone. I'm saying that I'm bad or wrong. I'm from a heart, I'd rather price six or two or more. Can I ask for? Look, kids, the lesson is I'm not just in your preferences. I'm just saying, come on now. Check your collection, watch your. Alright, alright. That was uh, Case Logic by Logic. <laughs> Another new band that I found. Welcome once again to Joe the Shirt's Off the Cuff. As you all know by now, I am Joe the Shirt, and uh, Off the Cuff is what I do. Uh, it's good to be back with you guys. Um, I uh, noticed that my last show posted it, and within like a day, there was like already, you know, over 20 people listening in. And I, you know, I wanted to thank you guys for that. Oh my God. So uh, obviously, a lot of stuff has gone on. Uh, in the last uh, week or so, some of you may have noticed that we had an election. Uh, Barack Obama won. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at any time I talk about Barack Obama, I always mention this story, which is uh, the first time that he won, I was walking my dog. It was early in the, early in the morning, and uh, there was this homeless guy. And... Uh, he he says he, uh, he he yelled out to me. He's like, "Happy New Year!" And I'm like, "Well, Happy New Year!" Yeah, whatever. A little early, but okay. And then he yells out, "It's the year of the nigger!" And all I could think to myself is, Barack Obama is quite possibly the most powerful man in the world right now, and you're sitting on a grate for warmth while eating garbage. We're gonna have to change what the word nigger means, okay? Because uh, it's not him. But that's, uh, that, that story always, anytime I think about Barack Obama, I always think about that story. That, that really did happen. Uh, I'm not surprised that Barack Obama won. I, uh, I voted for him again. Mm, there was uh, some interesting articles in the paper. Uh, Mitt Romney who's uh, lost, <laughs> he lost, and uh, he's, a, I, 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 th I think he's being a little petty, because he's uh, throwing up blame as to why he lost, and a lot of the blame, he says, is because uh, Barack Obama, President Barack Obama, mind you, Commander-in-Chief Barack Obama, um, uh, according to Mitt, uh, Barack Obama was giving uh, very large gifts to certain groups in order to get them to vote for him. Like, for instance, uh, he, he, he cites the fact that uh, uh, he's extending, he's planning to extend medical coverage for children uh, that are as old as 26 years old. So that, you know, that whole, it used to be, you know, you're 18, you're an adult, you can't be on your parents, you know, medical insurance. Well, that's not the way it's going to be now. Uh, another one, he said, is uh, the whole Obamacare thing, which uh, I believe uh, requires any businesses where uh, employees work, I think it's like 40 hours a week, and there are more than 50 employees working at these businesses that the employers have to provide Medical insurance, okay, and uh, you know that that was a big boon, obviously, for uh, low-income houses, uh, of which he noted a lot of them were Latinos or he, or he likes to put it Hispanics uh, and uh, poor black. And you know what? Yeah, if I'm making a whole fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars a year, 
then yeah, it'd be nice if I could get medical coverage. It, I, I, I would really enjoy that. that, that'd be nice, especially with my family. You know, I'm not one of these people that goes around condoning poor ass families that go off and have like 19 children, okay? I don't condone that. I mean, I come from a family like that, but I don't condone it, all right? My, my grandmother had 19 kids. That was not a good idea. I'll be the first one to say it. That was a, that not a good idea. But I think that, you know, it, they exist. If they exist, it's already too late. You can't shove the kids back in. And uh, so, yeah, uh, Mitt here is saying that uh, Obama was basically buying votes by promising, uh, you know, young, black, Latino uh, voters uh, a bunch of incentives to get them to vote for him. And I'm absolutely 100% sure Mitt wasn't doing anything like that with his friends that he was trying to get to vote for him. I'm sure he wasn't planning on uh, easing taxes on major companies and corporations. I'm sure he wasn't planning on doing that. I'm, I'm sure of that, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm sure that, uh, yeah. Actually, let's, let's face facts. He didn't want the Obamacare. He didn't, he pr prefers the idea everybody goes out and buys insurance for yourself, and if you can't afford it, you can go fuck yourself. That's the Mitt Romney plan, all right? I mean, <laughs> I mean don't get me wrong. Mitt Romney loves, loves, loves foreigners that can afford to invest in his businesses. But if you happen to be any, you know, darker than, say, Ekru, you can go fuck yourself when it comes to Mick Romney. I, I, I felt so pandered to when he would have his son come out and, and address the audience in Spanish. I'm like, okay, I get the move you're making here, I get it, but it's like, don't pander to me, man. It's like, it, especially because we're talking about a guy here that's also very supportive of making sure everybody knows how to speak English. So what do you do? You pander to us and then have somebody that speaks Spanish. All right, so don't, you know, don't lie to me and say that you, you had no intention of taking care of your friends just the way uh, Barack Obama was planning on taking care of his friends. That's what politicians do, okay? They, they buy votes. Now, uh, I, I, I read some arguments online about how it, some people thought it was disgusting that uh, people were going to go out and vote for Barack Obama simply because he's black. That is it. That's the only reason. No real knowledge about his politics, uh, no real knowledge about his foreign policy, his domestic policy, uh, no knowledge of what the fuck Obamacare is, you know, how it's going to affect you in the next uh, year or two, and it will. But they were voting for him because he's black. And um, I have no problem with this. And I'll tell you why. Is it the most informed decision that you're going to make, you know, just to vote for somebody because they're black? Um, no, but it's, I think it's very traditional in any sort of uh, political election that you vote for somebody you can relate to, you know? Um, you know, uh, when, uh, you know when, when John Kennedy was running for president, I can guarantee you a lot more Catholics came out and voted than normally would have. Okay, so if people are coming out and voting for Barack Obama because he's black, I don't have a problem with that. Because in, in, in some small way, I think all of us, all of us uh, democratic, liberal, left-wingy nutsos that we are, we wanted to be the first generation to finally elect a black president. We wanted to do that. We want to finally see that happen so that we could say we did that, okay? We're not a whole, just a country full of rednecks and racists. You know, and, uh, and I took part of that. I did, I took part in that, and I'm not ashamed of it. You know, and the other reason why I'm not ashamed of it, because I know for a fact, plenty of people that voted against Barack Obama because he's black. They didn't vote for Mitt Romney. That's not what I'm saying. They didn't vote for Mitt Romney. They voted against Barack Obama. That's what they did. They voted against him. You know, they just didn't want a black president. And, I mean, even the GOP, they're, they're, some of their leaders are even telling people, yeah, you know, a lot of people want to get rid of Barack Obama just because he's black. That's, you know, that, 
And I understand that. You, you want to vote for somebody that you believe has your core values at heart. You know, and uh, some of those core values are what you look like. So, yeah, I don't blame people for voting for Mitt Romney just because they didn't want to vote for the black guy. Same way I don't uh, hold it against anybody that voted for Barack Obama just because he's black. No idea about his political views whatsoever. But you just voted for him because he's black. Great. Works for me. I don't know. It's, I, I, it's always funny when these guys get all up in each other's panties about uh, what's important and what's not and how things are done and what, whether or not somebody's playing dirty. They always play dirty. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what they do. And some people are so pissed off that uh, people are seeking to secede from the union. Okay, yeah, you may not, you may not have heard of this one. Uh, let's see, read a little bit here. What well, began with a small group of citizens voicing disappointment with President Obama's re-election has turned into a plea from hundreds of thousands that their states be granted independence from the federal government. Uh, the White House has received secession petitions from citizens in all 50 states requesting that the administration peacefully grant them the opportunity to form their own sovereign government. Um, no state legislature has seconded the motion. Uh, <laughs> the petitions are created through the administration's We the People initiative launched in 2011 to give citizens an opportunity to have their voices heard. Um, good luck. <laughs> Seriously, good luck. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> we fought the bloodiest war ever on the, in this country to make sure that you can't secede. You can't leave the country just because you don't like the government. Or you want to leave the country? You go ahead, but you leave the land here with us. <laughs> you want to go to France? Secede to France. You want to go to Israel? Go to Israel. You want to go to the Bahamas for the rest of your fucking life? You go ahead. But we're keeping the land. See? Well, you know, Arizona, you know, Florida, uh, Texas, we're keeping it. You can all go. Uh, apparently, of the 146 petitions listed on the website, 66 are requests for secession. Uh, the Texas petition all by itself has more than 100,000 signatures. Uh, and then uh, also 5,000 people in Austin, the state's capital, petitioned for independence from Texas to remain part of the United States. Everyone wants to secede from something or another. Um, good luck. Really, you, you go for it. I say leave. Just like I said, leave the land here. The land stays. You can go. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, what else we got here? The papers, the papers, the papers. Mm. Uh, uh, let's see, GOP governors currently blaming, well, look at that, Romney. Mm -hmm. Let's see, their annual conference becomes a group discussion of the presidential race in Las Vegas, no less. Uh, a week's worth of soul searching among Republicans has yielded no shortage of explanations for the party's failure to win the White House. They point to the Obama campaign's early and aggressive effort to disparage Mitt Romney. They admit Democrats had a superior voter turnout operation. Some point to Superstorm Sandy saying it robs Romney of momentum. That's it. Let's just blame the storm. Because that's why Mitt Romney didn't win, you know. Uh, last time I checked, New York was going to vote for Barack Obama no matter storm or no. It, that's just the way it was going to happen. Uh, what they won't say is that President Obama won a mandate for his vision or that the GOP has veered too far right in its outlook. Quote, the president won the election, but I think it wasn't on the issues, Iowa Governor Terry Branstad said Thursday at the annual Republican Governors Association Conference. Quote, he ran a heck of a good grassroots organization and was able to basically convince enough people that they couldn't trust Governor Romney. Well, yeah, that's what you do in an election. <laughs> it's not just, hey, vote for me because I'm a good guy. It's also, vote for me because I'm a good guy and the other guy's a dick. That's typically the way elections work, last time I checked. Mm. Uh, uh, uh. 
And let's not forget um, the little conversation that uh, Romney was heard having about how, you know, 47% of the population, you know, aren't smart enough to vote for him and are probably are all on uh, government aid and welfare anyway. And of course they wouldn't vote. I'm like, well, that's just not the kind of thing you want to say. <laughs> You, you didn't. You don't come off as a man of the people. You come off. You, you, Romney came off as a man of his people, and when I say that, yeah, I do mean wealthy, mostly white and male. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And and if I was wealthy, uh, white and male, uh, I probably I might have voted for Mitt Romney as well, because he's looking to protect my interest. Or at least I, that's why I'm voting for him. And that's why people voted for Barack Obama, because they thought he would protect his interests. Uh, that remains to be seen. We got four more years, you know, so we'll figure it out, you know, sooner or later. Now, I'm going to take a quick break, and then when I do, I'm going to talk a little bit about the CIA, because I think this story is fucking funny. I'm Joe the Shirt, I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back. As I affect and shape the landscape, the represent is my own mandate. No conspiracy theory can't break this bond of fellowship. Whether rockets are on the melody, they mark a lot on this page when a fellow veteran. Original songs and poverty written form, heads get split and torn. Is the near is it getting warm? This court of three strands will not be quickly broken, getting you strictly open. Jewels of truth, lyrically spoken. This is war, you can't call time out. Let's stop the rise so we can all climb out. Girl, this is real, just give me something I can feel. You can be innovative without having to try and reinvent the wheel. Escape the bottom of the barrel, speaking on your apparel. How can you bring a vision to fruition if you're sterile? Do not for lack of testosterone. Essentially, you're in a fossil. Holding a new persona cause you lost your own. Like some critical parasitical entity overtaking your system and assuming your identity. The only message sent to me is one of hopelessness. And it don't take a photograph to show me where your focus is. You don't want any. Take it to the levels of subterranean jetties. We came with the complexity, but the world wasn't ready. Christ and hip hop, rock it now. Stop like you don't want any. Take it to the levels of subterranean jetties. We came with the complexity, but the world wasn't ready. Christ and hip hop, rock it now. Stop like Though when you're a veteran Though I spent many nights Staying up late like Letterman Assembling something that's sinking deep like sediment Rebel like the intimate Up against the ungenuine Creatively impotent gentlemen Synchronizing a unified mind In the trio Passing up as a placebo While you lay in a fetal position Wishing to find your niche in life Even if it means just a bit Inside of a loosely knit To net only to capture your regrets And let go of all your dreams Promise never kept Cause one slip trip Fell into a ditch Unequally hit Influencing your association sticks and we are back. I know I keep saying we as if like my entire staff is here, but you know, it's just me and the dog. <laughs> uh, I want to talk a little bit about the CIA and uh, what's this cat's name? Atreus? Yeah. Apparently, Mr. Petraeus, the uh, head of the CIA, was caught with his hand in somebody else's cookie jar. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, David Petraeus. Um, head of the CIA um, found out he was uh, having an affair with his, uh, I believe, his uh, the, the writer uh, who's writing his uh, life story or whatever. Um, and uh, just this past week, he uh, retired, gave uh, Barack Obama his resignation. And, uh, you know, I don't know why. Honestly, I, I've gone through this one a few times myself here. Uh, you know, not that I've ever, you know, the head of the CIA. But, uh, you know, I, at what point do we believe that you cannot cheat on your wife and somehow not be able to do your job? It, when, how, how does this happen? You know, I was... Uh, Men all over the world, powerful, rich men, cheat on their wives every day and somehow manage to run countries and multi-billion dollar corporations and drug cartels. And, you know, it, they somehow manage to keep their shit together 
while getting some little nasty nasty on the side. Uh, personally, uh, it's, it's, it's a scary uh, concept for me because like I said, this guy is the head of the CIA. And, if, and, and the way they found out about this is that the FBI was conducting another search uh, into uh, some uh, private emails and they, uh, during these searches, uh, they discovered that he was sending emails back and forth with this woman and that they, he, he was having an affair. Um, I honestly don't think that's anybody's fucking business. I, I really don't. I think that's a, that's a problem between him and his wife and his mistress and uh, the need for a better password, apparently, on his email. Uh... <laughs> But that's, that scares the fuck out of me because you think about it. I mean, there's, there's only about the head of the CIA can't keep his secret secret. What chance do the rest of us fucking have? You know, I mean, the truth of the matter is, I mean, anybody, you know, could hack into your computer right now. Hack into your computer, see your financial statements, see your emails, see pictures or videos that are intended just for you and that special someone. Um, but they, it could happen. You know, I mean, I told about a story last year about a, a guy who had his laptop stolen and he was able to get it back because with his, with another computer he had at home, he was able to somehow call or connect to that first laptop, turn on the camera on the computer and see who it was stole his laptop. And then after that, it was just a matter of just, you know, finding the signal and fi finding the guy. But that's how scary it is. That's how creepy it is. When I do this show, um, I am using a microphone made by the lovely people at Logitech uh, that also has a camera connected to it. I picked this one because, so that I could, if I felt like putting up video more often, I could. But also, it's a very good sound quality. But like I said, somebody could literally just hack into my computer and turn on my camera and see whatever it is I do, whether it's uh, picking my nose or jerking off or watching porn or you know having sex with my girlfriend. I mean, it, I, I could be doing anything here, literally. You know, I just trust that, you know, nobody has that much of an interest in what I do with my daily life. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but the point is, if somebody really wanted to, they probably could. Uh, like most of you, the vast majority of you, um, the security you have on your computer is next to nothing. You know, put all the passwords you want on that shit, put all the you know, spyware or whatever, or uh, clean it up, whatever you want to. But I can guarantee you if somebody, if one of these little geeks wants to get into your computer and see what it is you've got going, it, it's going to happen. So yeah, it does bother me that somebody as powerful as the head of the CIA uh, can just they, they they can just break into his email. The government just decided, well, we need to be able to get in there for an investigation's sake. You know, no warning of him. You know, they just went in and found all this stuff for some reason, told on him, and uh, now the man's out of a job. Even though President Barack Obama. Uh, is quoted as saying that you know they put on that he had an exemplary uh, career with the CIA and the military, and that it would be a sad thing to see him go. I say don't accept his resignation, then Barack Obama. Uh, you don't have to. He doesn't have to quit. I mean, yes, it's embarrassing. It's it, it is because you know you're a very public figure, and then your wife's going to know, all your friends are going to know. Uh, but it was going to happen sooner or later, but not just, but not like, say, on the nightly news. That's not where you wanted to see it, I suppose. But yeah, my, my, my main two points are still, the man can still do his job. Uh, it's really none of our business. And three, um, it's, it really should scare all of you a lot more than it does. You should really consider what it is the government is allowed to do. The government, when they decide that they want to go through your private emails, that's based on an old law put in place back in 1988, I think, which gives you a lot more rights uh, for, like, say, a letter in your file cabinet than, say, it does a letter on your computer. 
because they can access it, you know, without actually having to touch your computer. Whereas, whereas uh, if you have a, le a secret letter in your house, they have to have access to your house first, and that requires a warrant. This doesn't require a warrant, and, 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 and even if it does, it gets processed very, very quickly because we want to protect national security, we want to make sure nobody tries to erase anything. So a lot of excuses being used, you know, to supersede your rights to privacy. Now, I know we don't have a right to privacy anymore. The computer killed that. Computer, the internet, the smart TVs that have computers in them, you know, you can access, you know, YouTube and Netflix. So, yeah, it's gone, man. You know, you're talking about, you know, something that you can get online with literally hundreds or maybe thousands of people on World of Warcraft, and you're all connected. And any one of these guys could be an idiot that will, you know, fuck you over. Use that connection to their advantage to fuck you over. So you guys really got to think about that one a little more. More military in the news. Army General William Kip Ward, apparently, uh, he was, I believe, a four-star general, and he's been reduced to a three-star general. He's going to be retiring. Um, uh, no, he was a three-star general, and serving two-star general. No, no, he, no, no, he was a four-star. Now he's been reduced in rank to three-star general because apparently he used uh, military vehicles and personnel to lead a lavish lifestyle for him and his wife, uh, including using military vehicles to transport his wife on shopping trips, also known for staying in lavish hotels in New York and Bermuda, and accepted dinner and Broadway tickets from a military contractor. Uh, that's a bit of impropriety right there because then it might, if he gives them a contract, a nice juicy contract, then it could be said that, you know, he got a bribe. But uh, for the most part, I'm not really all that bothered by this, because let's face facts. Like I said, people in power, they're going to use it. You know, it's like, oh, big day. You know, he, his wife went on shopping trips with a, with a Humvee. It's not like he said, here, baby, take the keys to the tank. You know, okay, just make sure you park it towards the back. I don't want dings in it. No, it's like, it's, no, take my wife. <laughs> Uh, apparently, this will cost him, uh, besides the demotion, uh, his retirement pension will drop down $30,000 a year, so he'll be receiving $208,000 a year. Um, and he will also need to uh, pay back the government $82,000 for uh, uncondoned ex military expenses. You know what? Honestly, I don't care that much. Yeah, I really don't. It's not like uh, over in Korea where they're giving like, you know, police captains BMWs so they can ride around town. <laughs> yeah, but uh, as far as military abuse goes, it's not a biggie. You know what I mean? That's I'm not worried about that guy. I, I <laughs> and and they and apparently they didn't have to take the star and demote him and cut his pension by thirty grand. They could they considered just letting him keep it getting, you know, a little write-up, a reprimand. He's retiring anyway. Uh, I think he's like 63 years old. But uh, apparently they put a 17-month investigation into spending habits. 17 months investigation, and all he has to do is pay back $82,000? Uh, you wasted your money. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me for today. Thank you for listening. As always, I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff. Translations in my heart and influence of the soul. My power force allows me not to have a typical flow. In the bay, create and reach beyond the typical goals. All of the dreams have never seen the be my sea low. Switch it up three for the money, four for the show. Bad and vision over from the time the trap begins and ends. I'm hoping and praying that you've been inspired to go higher than the limitations of shackles and chains. Amazing how change is available to anyone who makes an honest attempt, except to no man. Oh man, I was like, yo man, find it ironic. Come over the times I fuck within the book, I found the answers to my. Problems. Now me and the author is tight I write the mic and he writes my rock uh, uh, uh. We make a good team, don't you agree? 
Christ, plus Othello equals MC. Methodical styles like flip, making up for lost time. It's me.